down, but down, deep down, down, down. Here we are in this game. Ugh. Final, final palate cleanser. Cheers, bud. Indeed. We're gonna get so much scrap money for all this stolen brick. Why don't you use it in your house? Because so you I, I don't have any other things that need brick. Are you sure? Uh-huh, we're gonna use glass bricks for the big wall. Uh -huh. And we're gonna use tiny bricks for the the foundation easement. I or, guess. Or whatever the, whatever the little thing's called. Hey, man, I'm just trying to go to town. Leave me be. I'm not judging. You sound pretty judgy. You're judgy. How's that? My drink this evening is Lagavulin uh, 8. I think their 8 year is very flavorful and robust, and it tastes like uh, smoking a barn door. <laughs> it's it's uh, robust. What's what's your beverage? Currently, a Dr. Pepper. Oh, man. I know, but I, uh, I had just tried some Four Roses single barrel. Ooh, Four Roses. That guy's angry at us. Why are people so fucking angry? Well, nothing else makes sense, so why would there be a reason for it? Alright, so we need to go do st- what? Oh. The cult's back with their plane. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. You, uh, sending some 50 caliber rounds after him? You know, if you just nicked that radiator, that thing would be done. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Got him. Oh, uh, he's coming right for us. Yeah, that's how you do it. Fucking shoot that pilot out. Oh, please. Please. Thank right. you. We've got an ATV now. Yeah, we do. Alright, fuck it. Miss Murder Truck. I miss Murder Truck. Rescued you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh man, right as we said we missed murder truck. Look. Yeah. It's a sign. It's a sign from the gods of murder truck. See you later, citizen. Let them absorb some bullets for us. We'll just wait until something comes along. No, so how does commandeering a vehicle work in real life? I don't know. Never tried. I don't think it's allowed in statute. But I also don't think it's specifically forbidden. I think it's just one of those things is as needed. You know, if you took someone's vehicle and you're like, well, it was necessary for blah, blah, blah. And as long as no damage was done, you know. I think you'd have a very hard time selling that to your chief. Yeah, I know. But like, if it was like to save the day, which is the only circumstance in which I would see it be acceptable, I think it would be fine. Oh, yeah. You know, they'd give that citizen a, a fucking like award for some free crime or something. Or whatever you do in that circumstance. County. Yep. This is a voucher for one misdemeanor. That sounds great. Is that a skunk? Skunk. There we go. You know that would smell so fucking bad. Ugh. Obviously this vehicle is now tainted. Alright, so we just need to find more of these civilians that are littered around and whatnot. Yeah. Ostensibly. But this this is this in a game is called filler material. Oh yeah, yeah this is This is less interesting filler material than ninety percent of Dragon Balls. Well, that's the weird thing, is that, like, if you look at, um, games that are hyped all shit with amazing huge storyline, you get, like, Dragon Age Inquisition, for instance, where you see this storyline and these characters and they spend all this money, and then in between is, alright, go to these 12 places and do these 36 tasks to get to the next... All of them are just a button push. Yeah. Nice. That, that was good. That was, that was really good. Oh, oh, look. It's drive through Hi. 
That's easy. Uh oh. I want to see how this plays out. Oh, it's just. <sighs> I, I, I am disappointed in nature here. Disappointed in nature, Ubisoft, ourselves. Yeah. I'm helping. I'm really surprised they don't try and use mounted weapons against us more. Oh. Oh. If it was a real rocket, we would have been in trouble. But it was a Hollywood rocket. <laughs> yeah, you can't zip line when you're dead. How's the sig treat you? It's alright, I mean, it's accurate. Compared to, uh... Some of the other damage in the game, it's paltry. Yeah, that's true. But game designers think 9mm is weak. And with different ammunition, you can get a lot of interesting output out of 9mm. Oh, absolutely. Because old 9mm, if you're talking about like 1970s 9mm, 115 grain, yeah, it was, it was fairly anemic. 1950s 9mm, you know, weak. Yeah. Like any good myth, there's some truth. Um, but modern technologies come to the point. That rope didn't move. Yeah. Let's go free the people. Here, uh, pull me along. Oh, well, that works. Oh, I, I did it. Usually I just kill everybody in the back. Usually. Alright, let me get out and... You are free! We just need to find two more, then. Alright, we cut you loose in the middle of nowhere. You guys good? Alright, let's go. Who's shooting at us? Somebody. Oh, planes. Oh. Just, just, yeah. I was gonna say, if you just fly low enough, he'll crash into the ground. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. Hold on, my 50 caliber barrels overheated. Wow. Which... That's why you wear a seatbelt. Yeah. As everybody knows, any good machine gun stops firing when it gets fired a lot. And uh, you just can't for like 10 seconds. And that cools them down. Look at all these people driving up here now. It's like, they're like, oh, it's open for tourism. Come see all the mutilated bodies from the rocket attack by the deputy. I would go up there to hang out. That'd be a cool place to, like, smoke pot, you know, and, like, watch the stars. Maybe have, like, a barbecue or something. Once upon a time, an old man sold me some elderberry wine. He made it himself. I found out why there is not a market for that. <laughs> it tasted like grass. And then that slight buzz of, like, NyQuil. It will not drive with the bag down. I have to know from moving company experience that that is tr it will drive with the bag down. So you will get in trouble. Okay. Alright, so we got a truck. Um, it's not in great <laughs> it's shape. It's already angry. It's got some angry smoke, okay? I'll admit that. It's got, it's got a few bits of the what angry. What do we have in the back? Nothing. I it's mean, angry it, and we haven't put anything back there? Oh not yet. Oh, I'm stuck in it. Cool, let's go. Yeah, we're going. Nope. Okay, it spit me out. Oh, man. Yeah, the back is down, though. Really? I'm on the ramp. Yeah, the back is down. You're driving with the ramp out. <laughs> that may have tamed it some. Hold on, we got some passengers. <laughs> oh, wow, they threw drugs. You shouldn't shoot on LSD. Yeah, it makes it... Oh, God damn. This is a SIG commercial. SIG! From the makers of Broken Dreams and Expensive Coins. Have you ever wanted to shoot somebody with a weapon that costs more than the car you drive? Alright, put it, put her back. And let's, let's load her up for some fun. I think we got a good load of meat here. Once. You think so? We've got a couple more bodies. Oh, I see that. And then there's some more in front of the truck as well. All right, well, we got to load this up. We got to go to market. We really did God's work on this one. Just set this truck on a fire and drive it into their base. <laughs> you can have these back. We're done with them. 
Oh, and there's people on the ground, too. In the plane. Oh, that was great. That, that was a twofer. All right, look, we got to move this truck. We have to move this truck now. They're yep. conspiring against us. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. All right, so oh, yes. here we go. We got to take meat to market, boys. <laughs> All right. Oh, the sound it's making. We didn't leave any. They're all hanging back there. Yeah, time to take the meat to market. What they really need is they need a box trailer for the semis. I agree. If we could pack murder truck full of bodies. Oh man, that would be great. And it gives you a bonus per body. <laughs> Unsettling bonus. Yeah, like the enemy see us. More, yeah, you get more than... 10 or 12 bodies in there, and even your allies open fire on you on sight. No, they see you and eat a gun. <laughs> oh no, it's him! So, uh, we're still trucking right along. We got two bodies just hanging out about three feet outside of the starboard, uh, edge of the box. Oh look, bad guys, hold on. <laughs> That's how you do that. I hope that looked the same on your screen. I think it looked pretty good. We're heroes. We're mighty heroes. We need mighty to get warriors. out. Mighty warriors. We are might. Oh my god, hold on. I blew up. So who's feeding this cult? Like, how are they eating? Because any cult has like an aggressive agrarian... Yeah. ...base to it. You see them all out there planting bean fields and, and... Except that we only see these guys plant their LSD flowers. Right, so they're not trading it. It's not... We're not the DEA. We, we don't see DEA agents going, Oh, these guys got the biggest meth lab and they're working in old missile silos like the guy in Kansas City, you know, or Kansas. Where was he? Mm-hmm. That guy was in central Kansas, west of Topeka. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is that... You end up with this really bizarre cult, and you're going, okay, well, let's say they don't have a huge footprint because they're not making all these drugs and they're not selling guns. So, you know, they're they're not the Golden Triangle guys, and they're they're definitely not the Branch Davidians. So, yeah. what what are they? How are they making their money? And if they're not doing all that, if they're just homegrown, they're going to be sitting there having a very vast and huge agrarian bit to them. So you see them out there growing their own food and running their own schools and, you know, building their own buildings, you know, just kind of like the Amish, but with guns and shit. So, what the... There's one behind us. I'm stuck on the roof? Okay, I fixed it. See, if you use an old magazine per bad guy, you're a hero. Oh man, I'd love to have an old Ford like this. Like a 460, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Broncos were fantastic as well. Oh yeah, like a '70s Bronco with because with a, with a 460, that would be some hot shit. Really aggressive, you know. I mean, I'd gear it down to where it could only do 80, but just oh my god, you you put the right gears in that thing, and it would just be hauling ass off road. Mm -hmm. oh, hold on. Did I get him? <laughs> Tried to uh, shoot him. You at did. The, yeah, just blast him as we drive by. I didn't know if the timing would work out. Yeah, man, a 12 gauge, just 12 gauge right off the dash. That's that's some good shit right there. Ooh, he almost got us with an RPG. I know. From about three inches. Yeah, I don't think it would really arm. No, there's no way it would arm. Well. Well, there's a way. It's you wait, wait. know. I say that. But the Afghanis really liked to take the protective cap off the front of the high explosive warheads so that they didn't have to when they actually shot them. And there have been incidents of people dropping their rockets and blowing themselves up. Yeah, I mean, that and, you know, they say it's mechanically impossible to put a vehicle in reverse while it's going, you know, forward. Forward, yes. But there's always a guy who's done it. Action truck. Remember, when the Air Force used it, they didn't have any kind of infrastructure that ever had to reach it, so there's no roads. Yeah, because missiles, you just carry them overhand. 
-hmm. Like Lewis and Clark. I think they're the ones that first established this missile base. Yeah, you know, back then everything was made out of wood, so... I love that even in the apocalypse we have to buy and sell everything. And who are they selling oh, yeah. these pelts to? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just saying I'm a little bit... I'm a little bit heckin' mad. That it's not like, hey, you're the only guy out there doing stuff, by the way, I'll sell you some shit. Like, I... no. Yeah. Let me give you this. Yeah, like, oh, you can put this to use. Please go use it. You know, I, I think that would be fair. That's it. No more Mr. Reasonable Guy. I agree. Borf, Borf. Borf. Behind us. Roger. As we all know, wolves are attracted to very loud noises broadcast in the wilderness. <laughs> By man-made structures, yes. The other thing is, like, where are the colts? Where's their motor pool? Like, I would, I would fuck with their farms, and I'd fuck with their motor pool. I'd be like, okay, you can't eat now. You can't eat. You guys are now uh, light infantry. Have fun. Yeah, I mean, they'd be foot mobile, and they would just go, oh, this is hard. This is not at all what was on the pamphlet. My recruiter lied to me. I mean, but I'm saying go find their water supply and shit in it. <laughs> It wouldn't be hard. I mean, you could just give them all cholera. You could give them all dysentery. They'd, they'd all just fall apart really quick. Because I don't see any cult doctors, do you? No, I don't. Although, with how many of them have open wounds, somebody's taking care of them. Or they're just all on every antibiotic ever. These seem, like an these seem like anti-vaxxer people. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> he lit us on fire. What? I died. <laughs> this is the game. <laughs> oh, good lord. He shot a flaming arrow which came through the cockpit window to light me on fire. Which sympathetically lit you on fire and killed you. And then I could not switch seats or control the aircraft because there's no stick in the pilot position. Oh, good lord. Oh, Ubisoft. So, Deb, it's been since before COVID when we started this series. Yeah, God. Yeah, it's it's been a while, and now we are many years later, finally finishing Far Cry 5 with a cop. And it's been like five years. It's, yeah. If you guys watched this series from the very beginning, it's how Depp and I became friends. We suffered through a bad game, but one of the things we've done is watch some bad police instructional films while the Internet Archive still lets us do that. So today's film <laughs> is called St. Paul Police Detectives and Their Work, colon, a summer, or no, a color chartoon, because it has <laughs> charts. <laughs> oh, God, that's so fucking dumb. Let's watch some chartoons. Everybody loves a good Bugs Bunny chartroon. <laughs> All right. Okay. What Phones. numbers? Phone. All right. Four. Nine. It, wait. One. One. <laughs> oh one. no! It's too many ones. One. So another one. <laughs> one. <laughs> another one. Okay. That's for the express line. Can escape this <laughs> just jump. Law enforcement agency. Federal Bureau. No need for a cut. U.S. Secret Service. Minnesota State Crime Bureau. Uh, move the camera. I love, I love that the camera's moving and there's like the other cut off ones above. You can tell this is just like the bulletin board outside the fucking station. It, look, it says Shirtoon on it. Also, on the previous <laughs> title, sure yeah, on the previous title, there was no ellipses. They only had two points. It said other Why? special on agencies. The oh. of police investigators, wow. What, what, what are the police doing that isn't crime? Division. What is burglary but sex? Men are <laughs> Come on down to forgeries and fraud pawn shop. We got homicide. As it is commonly called. Oh, everybody loves to. lead glass. Yeah, I'll take that. Yes, let's take Grandpa's watch and these ampules. The fuck is that? Is that supposed to be silverware? I think that's silver spoons, yeah. Oh, yes. The black market in silver spoons and Grandma's opera, glass. opera glasses. Oh, look, it's the Hope Diamond. Remember that each department is ready to help you at all times. Is that a tire? 
<laughs> oh yeah, we don't need any numbers on this chart. The chart will show. The chart will show no numbers. Just trust us. And as usual, in the average large American. City, Where's Waldo? But a better record certainly is possible. Oh, okay, yeah. Sharp reduction in automobile theft. Accomplished because of public indignation against car thieves. <laughs> the, of laws, the public got together, together and they're like, cars, We are indignant about this car crime! Radio and fast statewide yeah, I've been on car chases At like this. Half, they just the decide to go through cars, backyards. Hey man, you gotta use it. <laughs> hey! That's a very yeah, brave way to stop a car chase, is getting hold, in front of it. Hold on, we gotta go to this short tune. Look! <laughs> The check mark is up there, but then down here is St. Paul. It's not a real number. Don't worry about numbers on your charts. It's not important, boys and girls. Cash. 2207 cash. 2207 cash. <laughs> God, checks are fancy back then. Not sufficient funds. <laughs> They're broke like I'm broke. Yeah. Oh, there's the spoons. Oh, oh I see. They're little Coke spatulas. Never mind. We returned your butter knives worth over three dollars. Oh, so that wasn't that wasn't a plate. That was a tire. It's like a tiny little tire. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. The sap just slowly creeps into view. Thank you. I don't like this Toy Story dad. These new toys are really rough. The homicide squad. <laughs> oh, that's kid's toy. Yeah. The arrest of the criminal. <laughs> God damn it. Are rare in Just in case Bayonet <laughs> Jones comes to town. Oh, here comes another chart. Ba -da -ba -ba -da. Where's the number? Who cares? Our crime yeah, is, is low. says, <laughs> 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 put it in the bag. Give me the pearls. The Lone Ranger oh, needs them. <laughs> What was that little eye wiggle? Did he have a stroke? Well, man, you get that hand drill in case you need to break into a house and never. And 80 handcuff keys, because everyone knows they're key different. All those bits will help that hand drill operator have a stroke using it. <laughs> You're gonna get through this lock in about a month. It's a lot of patience to break into a home. In of 840 unoccupied homes where police were notified in advance. Oh, 140? Was burglarized. It's like, what, that's three a day? That's a lot. Police women in St. Paul? Girls or women who oh, yes. By sex perverts. Sex perverts. Everyone knows sex perverts love roses. Sex perverts who will destroy your flowers. In locating and arresting the offenders. Don't hesitate to call oh, Jesus Christ. This one's subtle, huh? I like how he's got dirty hands. Like, they had him touch coal before he did this. Nah, he just ate lunch at the local Greasy Spoon. <laughs> Gambling liquor, the morals vice narcotics. Division. <laughs> the morals do matter. Where's that extra dot come from? Don't worry about it. It's an umlaut. <laughs> Diversion. <laughs> Well, yeah, the umlaut V, very like metal. Like operate gambling, happy-go-lucky citizens, otherwise well-respected, with the cards stacked against them, in games of chance, sacrifice... Of course the cards are stacked against them, that's what gambling is! ...to line the pockets of gangsters, and to finance their racket. You're going to go after the gangsters of St. Paul, that Minnesota. Like gin rummy? Don't worry about it. I'm gonna go use my pocket slot machine. I carry it with me all the time. I keep losing. I shouldn't have bought this goddamn thing. As fast oh, as they good lord. Known, whether they are just small dives or elaborate... Those effects, are like Monopoly money tokens. Ah, yes. Yin Shi, very common. Against dope peddlers and narcotic addicts. Oh, we've got white thing. powder, white powder, white powder, powder, black powder. Bring me the smoking opium, Reginald. I need to <laughs> stuff my clarinets. Ah, uh, marijuana <laughs> powder. <laughs> Can I have some marijuana powder? I am normal it's person. Nice potting soil. It is. Really, where are they? Oh, okay. I see where that third dot comes from. Man, what That's happened to that? A... What happened to the top center one? Never mind. <laughs> ah, the Schofield oh. kid strikes again. Baking flour. Our lab has. Things? See? Here they are. I killed Trotsky! <laughs> Good lord. And another rough cut. 
Don't worry about it. The director was like, I'm gonna make this snappy. Uh. No nope, music's back. No balls. Maybe no maybe balls. They only have license for this 10 second clip of this song. Right. Crime prevention begins with character training in the home. What? Play Rare baseball indoors? Yes, that's all box. Okay. Five way. Oh, hold on. That's a third boxer. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, in boxing, it's common to punch each other in the hands. Very common. That's not signed. No, no, that's not. That's not signed. That's not even filled out. Yeah, come back later. Looks like the magistrate of Mundanus did these. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, the shadow government. The shadow's council has spoken. As the constitutional right of trial by a petty jury. The petty jury. The petty jury. The judge will send you to the shadow realm. God, that's that's some fucking like Weimar Germany depressive art for those three concepts. Meanwhile, on the stern of a destroyer at sea, <laughs> by war bond. For your enjoyment, we present the National Anthem. Everyone stand. This is not the National Anthem. Uh. Nope. <laughs> no, that was... What was that? That was the Blau de Noob? Yeah, it, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, you, you know what I want to see in a game that hasn't been done well yet? Oh my god, really? Hold on. What would you like to see? A hind. Yes. Where, like, it, it's easy to control, your friend gets to be the weapons officer, and you get to do the stick and the rockets and the missile. I mean, no, let him have the missiles and the minigun. You do the rockets and you do the flying and have it just simplified, you know, mechanics like this. This the is all. You are on the opposite side of the map. See, I would also like to see, like, for uh, a Western game, like Red Dead Revolver, or whatever, you and your friends play through the whole campaign as a posse of, like, uh, lawmen. Like, ooh, yeah. regulators. Are those hard guys? Yeah, yes. they are. All right, time to leave. Um, we've, we've left Jacob's area. Oh, did we? Shit. We've got to turn north to the left. Roger. Or to the right. I'm fucking that up. Sorry, guys. That was just a test of the thing. You did good. Only a few more of those, and I think we get this. Oh, blow up the boat. To our right. Roger that. Oh, don't worry about it. We're fine. It's just a little bit of pine. Ponderosa pine. pine. See, this is how you fly a helicopter. At this height. <laughs> Decapitation altitude. Dude, if you saw a guy flying a helicopter in your jurisdiction this high off the ground at high speed, what would you do? Uh, that's sky crime. Uh, you only do the land crime. Yeah, I'm a land crime guy. I hit him with that helicopter. You did. Okay, would that then be in your purview? Uh, part of the crime happened in my jurisdiction, yes. The, the ground part. The ground part. All right. FAA would take the lead on that, but yes, we'd be involved. <laughs> talky talky, nobody cares. Does it work if he sings it to us? Like, can we listen to covers of that song? Yeah. Like, what if we hummed it with the other person? Oh, yeah. I guess it does it, work. It does work. Even if we're flying this high, we like just fly right at him. Would that mean we crash? We just bore in at 300 miles an hour. Yeah, right into his position. It's kind of like when people build drones for the first time and they fly them around. They don't realize that, you know, if you can see yourself on the drone camera, you're headed the wrong way. <laughs> oh. Hey, we skipped it. Hey. Briefly, I had my double barrel shotgun. Yeah, same. Call the herd. Call the herd. Yep. There's Call a lot. Call, call that herd. Pictures of angry animals, you know. Angry. Sacrifice. And mm, sacrifice and stuff. This guy... Controversy. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't get it. If they wanted to make a statement about America, they would have set this in a different time in a different place. 
If they wanted to make a statement about America, this would be a school. Fair. I mean, serious. It, if they if they wanted to make a statement about America, though, about everything wrong with America or something like that, you'd start the game off. I died somehow. Yeah. I would have the game start off in the 1920s, and uh, you're you're one of the Marines that goes into Nicaragua for the United Fruit Company, and you you just slowly you're the you're the wet behind the ears kid, and then after that whole thing, you're just super fucking jaded, and you talk about the lack of opportunity and the death of the American dream in the 30s. You know what I mean? Yeah. 30s was a terrifying time. Yeah, I mean, you you have some genuinely terrifying things happening, and you you see that that first glimpse of the the rusty side of the American dream. Um, well, and you you could do a lot of interesting stuff with something like that. You've got the bonus army marching on Washington. Yeah, and and you could do all that. And then show that, like we said, you're you're a guy who's hunting somebody for the police department, and you you're out there to try to you know as as a ranger, a U.S. marshal, you're trying to hunt down this crazy cult leader in rural Kansas, and you see like that your opening scene is your car breaking down because of the dust, like you're driving through a dust storm at night. Oh, it's Eli. Oh, God. We never could have guessed. Doug Dynasty. Yeah. What a shitty bow. What What is that thing he's got? I don't know. Anyways. Also, armored doors don't like to open like that because they're really heavy. Um, just a point. But the, the thing is, is that, like, that would be a much more interesting game, I think. We've come up with some very, very good concepts for things that would be more interesting. I agree. Uh, Blah, 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 I'm important. Blah, 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 cog in the machine. Cogito ergo sum. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, if it weren't for the fire and the these sinister people shooting at us, I think that this would be actually a rather nice, um... This would be a rather nice evening with the music in the fields. <laughs> I'm about as well protected as a Jolly Rancher. But no, the the thing the thing is is like I like the idea of that Roswell thing where you start off as an agent. No, you're an OSS agent in World War II, and you discover the Nazis. Uh, the, where their technology really came from is fucking UFO. And yeah. So yeah. the first mission is you blowing it up, and then it goes to Roswell, and then after Roswell and that, it introduces your principal characters. And you slowly build the agency over the course of several campaigns to deal with this alien thing, but also the conspiracies that rise out of that, you know? Yeah. Like people trying to reverse engineer technology, big corporations and big uh, multinational uh, groups and NGOs all trying to get a handle on it. And you find out that a lot of the real world events of what really happened is really all about this hidden war. Even in modern history, there's enough unknowns that you can connect a lot of dots with a storyline and have it make sense and raise questions. Yeah, and it would be interesting. all a tale has to do. Yeah, and you, you create an interesting fictional point to draw between all those dots, and you are a line to draw between all those dots. And I think that that would be a fun game to play because you'd have two modes. You'd have the, uh, you'd have the mode where you're running the agency, which is a real interesting RTS mode where you're allocating resources and there's an evil wolf that's biting me or something, spirit animal, I don't know. Anyways, the, you would have that and then you'd have the creepy investigative stuff that, you know, would probably borrow a little bit from L.A. Noir, just in terms of just yeah. creepy, unknown, exploring things. And then after that, and I love that they're, they have to do a loading screen like this between showdowns. Like, this is so badly put together. Okay, I'm gonna fuck this guy up. Kill Joseph Seed? Easy. Fuck. Let's just go up there and satchel charge him. Yep. Anyways, I mean, you can do a lot of interesting stuff and, and create this campaign where you play as this character who starts off very young in World War II but gifted and then by the end of the game he's like 60. And you know, like old Snake, you know, he's just he's he's beat yeah. up, and but you know, still very much in his prime. 
and you have all these shadow wars and operations that go on. Like I said, if I won the lottery, I would blow all of my fucking money on a game company and just try to make really cool games to show people that if you put money into the right stuff, you can have a good time and make something you're proud of. Because you know, the Black Pants Legion has like zero budget and it entertains the shit out of people somehow. Somehow. <laughs> But I think it's also because we have a lot of people volunteer their time and efforts. It is a collection of many individuals. Well, yeah, and that's that's the joy of something like that. Of course, this is this is a pure Ubisoft bad guy, where it's like, all right, you gotta climb with the rope thing, dude. We gotta use our gimmicks to get you off the mountain. Or what if I do this instead? And. Only you. <laughs> Just one satchel charge. Yeah, yeet. <laughs> he looks really good for having been blown the fuck up. All right, let's criticize his uniform here. I don't know if he talks to God. That doesn't matter. That's actually pivotal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that justifies everything you're doing. It's that divine mandate thing, right? So that is supposed to be three-colored desert, but it isn't. Yeah. It looks more like the uh, weird Egyptian, like, amoeba desert. Also, the missile keys, as we've talked about, are way wrong, but... Yeah, they're based off the commercial Soviet satellite launch keys. Well, that's what they could get uh, a picture of. on eBay. So yeah, that is the 82nd Airborne patch, but they've reversed the colors. It's also painted on. Yeah. All right, your haircut sucks, and I can't listen to this anymore. Where's the button I mashed to put a grenade in his mouth, pull the pin, and walk away? Let's test your jaw strength. Okay, step back. Only you. Oh, that made him part of the terrain. Now ain't the time to move. I wanted to steal him like we did the first guy, the Ryan Reynolds guy. Oh, that was so good. I'm putting you in the back of a truck, sir. You're coming with us. Hey, fuckos, we're here. Again. I am me. Concrete. A week. Concrete. That's, that would be my solution here. They don't even close the second blast door? Are they really preparing for the apocalypse? You know what I think I would do is I would go find the control room and put on, like, freeze frame, you know? <laughs> so, beep, 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 and they'd be like, what? And you go, you, you just start kicking the shit out of them to that. And they're like, oh no. Oh god. Yeah. I do love it when all of my 60s era doomsday bunkers are uh, voice activated. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> that song stuck in my head. Now. It's a great piece for a throwdown. So, you are in control of your own prison. Okay. The, the commandant, as it were. You have full authority to decide everything about this facility, including what your alarm for a riot is. Oh. What do you use? Obla di obla da. <laughs> and then you know people are dying. Yeah. See my my idea was the Space Jam theme song. Oh. Oh my god, they have Fiesta Pale here. So yes. much. Oh. Well, they strive for realism in all things. I know. No. No. Again, completely anemic flamethrower. Yeah. That's one of the flamethrowers that you use to clean out your ditch, not one you use to assault a bunker. Yeah. I want the real World War II M2 flamethrower. And I, I just want there to be a gout of flame that's like 60 yards long, just burning shit. I want to be a conductor. You, you use the flamethrower inside and it becomes inhospitable for everyone, including you. Yeah, you just start getting, like, your vision blurs because of the, the effect. <laughs> wow, that was nice. Oh, I died. Oh, the fire, oh yeah, the water should have put me out. But what I would really like to see is a game also do a 12-gauge shotgun 
like it would really work. Yeah, where it's just one pull and the person falls down. It does, if there were an armor, they fall down and they're hurt, maybe not dead. But definitely down. Uh, I'd also like to see realistic shotgun ranges. Yeah, out to 40, 50 yards. Like doing business. I mean, you're doing your best appreciable spread at, you know, 20, 30. That and a 10 gauge. Oh man, would that be great. Or a realistic elephant gun. Yeah, I was gonna say a punt gun. No, I, I'm thinking like a, a 600, 700 Nitro Express, you know? Reach a safe distance. Oh, well, I guess that counts. So I'm pretty sure that we left the uh, guy we were supposed to save on like the third floor. Yeah, well, he should have come out here. Also, Should've if there was faster. if there was the ability to flood that thing, wouldn't we have done that and then just sat by the front door and then just fucking beat the Wait. guys in the head? Yeah, just they could run out and they're like, and you just clunk and they fall down. I mean, you Looney Tunes them. Or just put a you know weld a steel grate over the door and then flood it. Yeah. Give the air some place to go and it will fill with water. Each of us found the white tail. Whatever. There is no. In essence, this is a war of religions, you know, because they're, each of these little cults is a religion. The White Tails is a religion, you know. They're, they're these religious families. They're all secular, but still, they're all belief systems, and they're all at war with one another. I get what they're doing here, but it is so hackneyed and sloppy. Yeah, it is somehow both way too and not nearly far enough to have actually been effective. It's, it's like they thought about doing it and then decided that that might ruffle some feathers and gave up. The incompetence is insulting. Why would you need to print out, like, flyers that said fuck the cult? <laughs> I'm gonna buy just a good old AK-47. For the final confrontation? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm gonna go with the uh, VZ-63 Scorpion. Oh, tasty. I'm insulted that they just made the 20 round mag look longer rather than giving it the drum. You know, these people have insulted us in many ways, and maybe that's the experience they're going for. Somebody's gonna get the fucking bat. They're gonna get the bat where it all began. Oh, I, we should run away. I just set the bunker on fire. Oh yeah, we need to leave. Cause we've, it's we've had no showdown. We'll count, but, well you know what I mean. Now, I, I want to know, like, what was going through their heads and why do I hate it? You know what another good setting for this would be is, like, New Orleans, 1930. Organized crime, prohibition cops, all sorts of weird shit. You can even add mysticism and crazy stuff in terms of, oh, yeah. you know. Add the hoodoo. Add the hoodoo, the voodoo, the santeria, add the, add, add all of that as legitimate things in the game. Because in these games, they always do a little bit of mysticism, and I think that's fine. That's fair, you know? I got AK. You will be very deaf if I shoot it, but... That is what AK is for. Somehow, harder to find a pass through the woods in this than it was in the semi-truck. It's because Murder Truck was amazing, and I've never forgotten it. Is it very floaty and difficult to control? Yeah. For you? Okay. But this game the is. They're angry at us again because I'm not doing anything but holding down the gas. You have to understand though, this game is awful, and that kind of that kind of goes with it. You know, I wish that games would have more attention to detail when it came to, like, the effects of your actions on the world, because remember in Metal Gear Solid 3 where you would blow up their their bases and their yeah, ammo and supplies. Shit. Yeah, you blow up their bases and their ammo supplies, and, and they would, like, if they saw you, they'd only be able to shoot a magazine, and then they'd come run at you or something. Or if you if you blew up their um, their food supplies, they they would constantly be like oh and holding their gut like oh I wish I had food. And yeah, and they wouldn't focus on you for very long if uh, they spotted you. Yeah, I mean I like that. Where are we even headed? Oh, the church where it all began. Oh. Where it will suddenly be daytime for uh, reasons. All right. And 
way. Man, these guys have never AK'd much. I, I just, uh Game developers, go to the gun range and hire a genuine gun guy, not an internet gun guy. Do not hire a guy who does not own and shoot and collect firearms or work on them. Don't just hire one of these guys on the internet who just posts pictures of guns and rattles off information and has no practical experience. Because the stuff we're seeing is insulting us and it makes us hurt inside. It hurts our fifis. It is endemic to the industry, though. That's why we will always see airsoft magazines in video games. I know, I know, I know. But it just requires a little bit of effort. And it's why I think that people who are gun guys or hire gun guys or consult with gun guys, their games are so much crazier. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was expecting it to take control away from me soon. Oh my god. Does he ever wear a shirt? No. Why does he have a gun now? Well, because you've killed all of his people. So, do you think he's got, like, a constant supply of those sunglasses? We've broken them twice now. Well, they're not prescription. You wouldn't be able to get prescription back. Easy. So he's just going into, like, a gas station and so he's like, yeah. I want the ones that came out of the Big Lebowski. Yeah, I mean, these do look like Walter's glasses. So what if, like, they put him on, like, some Seroquel, and he was, like, normal, and he's like, fuck, man, this got out of hand. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Like, he's just like, I'm really sorry. I apologize. This this is unlike me. You know, he, he just said, you know, I, I had a rough run. A lot of things went bad in my life, and it built, and... Or just, I don't see myself as this anymore. And then he like looks to the rest of the people and he's like, sorry. And they're like, it's okay. Sometimes life gets away from us. <laughs> the secret ending is that, uh, you know, you punch the guy that goes into the rotor blades at the beginning or whatever. So they take him to jail and they put him on meds at jail and he becomes a motivational speaker. Yeah, like it shows like 18 months later and he's like, all right, everybody, let's talk about our future, you know. Yeah, and and he's and he's gained like fifty pounds because all the meds have made him like lethargic and sleepy. But he's still like really upbeat and stuff. And he he just he just talks and preaches a message of like happiness. And and he's like, you know, you can be happy with you. The inner you is most important. That would be a much better ending. I think it'd be hilarious. Uh, go in peace. We've taken. You see every single cult person out of this county. Yeah, I mean, he's what flock? Unless he's talking about our possessed friends back there. What about the birds? Like, does he have, like, some actual birds now? I mean, he's got tattoos of birds. He's kind of he's kind of big about that. Are those supposed to be sparrows? Well, that would be the traditional place to put sparrows. Yeah, if, if you, you were... were yeah, I was going to say, like, if, if you were, like, in the Merchant Marine. So what, what do you want to do? Let's kill him. All right, got it. Hey, fucko. Magnum phase. Oh, who cares? I just want to see Hope County get nuked again. I know. It's a wonderful ending. By the way, spoilers, people. Nukes are going to fall, and it turns out he was kind of right. But once again, this is this is their M. Night Shyamalanism going, Oh, it's a twist! Oh, you could walk away at the beginning! Oh, it's a twist! And it's not clever. No. It's just at the end of their thing, what if this happened? And they realize it's not a lot more work. Oh. Oh, God. No, not the drugs again. <laughs> we turn into the Joker. <laughs> we turn into the Joker and he's like, no. No, this is not how this was supposed to go. I got a bat. Oh, I died, like, in three seconds. Also, I have an enormous, like, cod piece, man. All right, there. I just I, wanted to bat somebody in the face. I understand, man. I get it. After this, we'll play a game that's actually joyful. Hey, remember when I saved you from that lady in the mist? Fucking weirdo. Well, now, this is the first time he mentions, like, the Lord, like, you know, Lord Jehovah, yeah. God. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I, I just thought that was practical. I had a T-1000 moment. Like, here's how we destroy him. This would be such a more powerful ending if instead of 
a fucking LSD trip. It was biblical plagues. Oh man, talk about great. That would that would be amazing. It would lend more credence to the idea that he might actually be talking to God. And this mechanic is awful, reviving all these people as he like phases in and out of existence. Yeah. As as he's like in the super drug cloud or something. I mean, there's a lot that could be done. I don't get it. I mean, this is just lazy. It's lazy story writing. It's lazy deliverance. I, I just get mad. Well, that was weird. Well, that was weird. Fight the father. Yeah, boom. He's a hit scan enemy. Are we like shooting him with bullets that do nothing because they're metaphorical bullets or something? Gotta get some of that scorpion love in. I agree. Be nice if our guys actually would do the revive thing in, in mass. Well, they do in single player. I don't know if they're not to make it harder. She's got an arrow sticking out of her. Seems to be bad for your health, man. Yeah, I mean, this guy is just... I don't get it. It's... this is a really awful last boss fight. It's not even yeah. hard, it's just annoying. It's staged, but sloppily. His AI is hilarious. He's got a man bun. <laughs> he goes dancing around the screen. Yeah, he's, he's got a man bun. I hate it. You don't have to believe shit. This is America, bud. Like, it should just show all of us corner him against a building. He's like, no, what? And it's just full auto. Not a bullet in him. Where's your gun? If somebody was watching that from outside, they'd just see, like, a group of us and him, like, fireball, fireball. Yeah, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. How do the birds know the nukes coming? Well, because nuclear warheads and the MIRVs come when they come in, they've got like a bird warning thing on there. They've got a deer whistle on them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The wrath of God upon the earth. And I'm sorry, but we'd be dead. So, yeah, we're all close enough to uh, have just lost our flesh. Why? Why did they nuke that mountain? It's it's just we need to leave. No, nah, it's fine. I think that's uh, a lot closer than they think it is. Yeah. That shockwave should have been on top of us almost as soon as that happened. Yeah, and, and, and when you're in that first flash, you're done. You know, that 10 PSI zone, you're done. If you're close enough to see the mushroom cloud, you're too close to the explosion. Well, depending on size. Oh, do I drive? Oh, no. Oh, you're driving? Okay, oh, dear. good. Oh, I've got to follow you on an ATV. <laughs> Don't worry, your friends are allowed to play the game too. Oh, this is wonderful. I'd be like, can we put on some music? And they're like, what? And then I put on freeze frame. <laughs> <laughs> Just, can I, can I put on some music? And it's like a polka band. Oh, come on. Weird Al's polka covers of... Oh, oh man, that would be great. This is way too many nukes. Yep. I'm sorry. Two nukes now in this county, which has a single town. Yeah, I mean, I could understand maybe if they got, like, unupdated missile lists for where the silos are, but no. That mushroom cloud is, like, ten feet down the road. We would be just dead. That's the other thing, is who's nuking? Yeah. Because they give some lip service to North Korea. You're telling me that North Korea used two of its 24 nuclear weapons on Hope County, Montana. Well, maybe they really missed. They were like aiming for South Korea. <laughs> you know, they oh, did. Oh, that's the third one. Yeah. I caught a third one. It's really eye opening seeing all this from the back end because all these set pieces are happening in front of you, and then I get there five, six minutes later. So it's just not anywhere near inch. Oh my god, I blew up in a nuke. Like, the whole truck blew up. It just blew up right then. For no reason. Oh my god. But no, what I'm saying is, like, why would right, they even- instead of putting me on the ATV, I'm gonna hop in the back of the truck. Alright. Sounds like a winner. You can't. No, I can't. 
All right, let's it go. Won't let me off. All right, so here's here's my idea. Here's my crazy idea. It's like a better ending to this is after you finish all this shit with the dude. After you finish all this stuff. And and he goes, oh, you know, the world's crazy and blah blah blah. And he's like, the what if he said, you know, you don't fit in the world anymore, or the world has changed, and I am the future, and you'll see, and I've kept you safe. And you wonder what that all means, right? Oh, too far from my partner. No. Yeah, I got hit by that car. Oh well, I blew up again. This is great. It seems that our deaths are linked together. Kind of reminds me of the end of um. God, uh... <laughs> they found a way to make a set piece Yeah. annoying. Well, that's the thing, is like, if you want to see how, what a good set piece looks like, is any of the end sequences for any of the Halo games. Yeah. Where it's just... Halo it's does what it does very, very well. Bunches of simple short firefights and interesting toys to play with them, you know? But so, here's, here's the thing that I think would be great, that I think would be really, really, really fun, is you, you, he says something like, the, can't you see I've kept you safe? Can't you see I've prepared you for this future world? And you're like, what are you talking about? You put him in the back of this thing, you drive outside the city, and as you're driving toward the town, or, you know, like Missoula, Montana, or whatever, you just see a giant fireball uh, that's burning the town down. And you realize the outside has completely collapsed, and this guy has kept you safe and has prepared you for the apocalypse. Like, that would be an interesting sort of... Hey, slow down a little bit. I'm falling behind on the ATV. All right. Everybody safe back there? Everybody got a juice? <laughs> Okay, I'm within sight of you again. Alright. There's the third one. Again, it's- it's- Oh god, no, not the deer. It's a deer on fire, ma'am. On star- He's in the pre-cooked. <laughs> on star calls. We detect you've been in a nuclear holocaust. Uh, yeah, that is correct. Your coverage has expired. Damn it. Hold on, let me get my card out. There we go. Oh, neat. Oh, and they don't even trust me with this part. Nope. Really? Of all the things to get laid low by, it was the Ponderosa Pine. The Ponderosa Pine. Oh my god, this is so dumb. I mean, at this point, we're so heavily irradiated, like... Don't worry about it. Like, wouldn't you just yeah. pull out, like, some lawn this chairs? It's turning black already. Might yeah. as well just lay down and enjoy it. Yeah, just, like, get out some beers, get out some lawn chairs, and be like, Hey, Clink, you know, here's to the end of the world, bud. And he's remarkably healthy through all this. Yeah. You want you want spoilers for uh, the next game? Oh, boy. I, I've not played the other one, but go ahead. So the deputy here gets pulled into the bunker, and they just live there for, like, 20 years. Really? Before Joseph comes out to, uh, start his cult again. In that time, you essentially spent 20 years as the sex slave and gimp to Joseph, because you're the only other person there. Gross. Yep. And you are now a silent sentinel of his will, with a bondage mask on. It means the politicians have been silent. No, they actually have their own bunkers. They're better than this one. <laughs> I'm, they I'm, thought about the whole two people thing. I'm willing to bet that the corporations still have offices in the Bahamas and Liechtenstein and many other places that don't get nuked. And they just go, okay. And they continue. Yeah. That would be an interesting concept for a game. Yeah, you play as a member of the a corporate team that survived the apocalypse and you're trying to restart your holdings and so you have all this gold and everything else and data that you've safeguarded and um you're, you're basically it's like the dutch east indies corporation you go oh we'll bring you technology we'll bring you medicine we'll show you how to build factories again uh but you know these are the prices i mean that that would be so much more interesting than like gimp slave uh-huh they kind of did something similar with the main character in that game um not, you know, outside influence, uh, but 
it's a corporation and you're an explorer re-entering Montana. Well, and that's the thing is like global thermonuclear war is not going to end in nuclear winter. And it's, it's, it's not going to end in the death of civilization because how many nukes are pointed at Brazil right now? How, how many nukes are pointed at Chile? How many nukes are pointed at Belize? How many nukes are pointed at Colombia? How many nukes are pointed at, you know, South America or South Africa? How many nukes are pointed... Any targets in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, I mean, they're going to write it out. And then Australia is going to be like, I have a Navy. And New Zealand's going to go, I have a Navy. And they're both going to go, best buds? Yep. And they're going to rule the world. I mean, that would be an interesting setting. Did you just sit there? Where did he yep. get that belt buckle? Did he... Did he just... You think he made it? I can give ammo. <laughs> That's my last act of defiance is I gave that man ammo and faded out. We need to find this guy Don Dan Dan Hay Dan Dan Hay. That's who we need to find. I hate this. Oh, don't bring Vera Lynn into this. Alright, we have time for one more. And uh, this one is called Combat Firing with Handguns. With hand, hand, guns. hand guns, and this one has Arizona. this one has been declassified for everyone's enjoyment. This film, previously classified as restricted security information, is now unclassified. Where's my soundtrack? Soundtrack. Here we oh, go. There it is. Produced by I guess the they US. couldn't afford the music. <laughs> it comes in at the last minute, like the U.S. Army. Combat firing with handguns. Like how it's all cursive in the middle. Like any non-important words are going to be cursive in an army uh, production of this era. Hey Jim, shoot at the camera. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Now the question is, did they point a camera up or did they have him turn his hand sideways? Because it kind of looked like the second. Don't worry about it. Offensive close quarter man to man combat fight. Man to man combat fight. It's almost fighting. like he's always out of ammunition with that thing. Something something seven rounds. <laughs> it's lightweight compared to a cannon. Fuck yeah! But it does the plasterboard. Fuck yeah, that's cool. The perfect home defense weapon. <laughs> sure, <laughs> here's the fridge. Ah yes, your shooting desk. <laughs> oh my god, look at the stance. Yes. Fuck yeah, that was when people had class. But they're not they're not bracing their offhand, it's just hanging their limp. Yeah, but he's good. Yeah, no wonder his fucking target looks like that. It's walked all over the it. It's a 45, it'll destroy a tiger. When the target is moving, that was, firing back at so they're shooting at what, 20 yards? And that was almost a foot vertical spread? Yeah, back then they didn't understand how to hold shots for breathing. They were just like, minute of man! Don't worry about that little guy. <laughs> that target's massive! Oh, look how... I thought they were shooting like b 8 Look at this guy! <laughs> And his starched khakis. I will advance on the enemy under the cover of noon. <laughs> he rotoscoped in the fucking projectile. Man, this guy is all that is all you can be. I think he hurt himself. Did you see the way he was walking forward? Well, he's wearing a little bit of a limp. I don't shit. I don't think those are incendiary tracers. Yeah, I don't think that's rotoscoping. I think they just accidentally gave him tracers. <laughs> yeah, see how the ground's burning behind it? That's awesome. Instinctively. They should have issued this ammo. Oh, squat shoot. Set Jerry on fire with incendiary bullets. God, can you imagine the smell of those wool uniforms burning? Well, how about this? Have you noticed the no hearing protection? <laughs> Trained to be deaf, so when combat comes, everyone yells. Everybody knows you pace back and forth. Now let's follow and then turn around on the range and face all your friends with a loaded fucking 1911. No, see, you took the magazine out. <laughs> oh, he's the instructor. Okay. 
Clear it by pointing it at the instructor. <laughs> One of the most important things in combat firing is the correct grip on the gun stock. So we'll take that up first. On the gun stock, Fit huh? The pistol in the crotch of the hand. Oh yeah, you're going to get railroad firm, tracks. Tight grip on the weapon. Use one so hand only. Very now, dead in the web. Alignment with the forearm. So if you pointed your finger instead of the gun, point right at the right cameraman. <laughs> Fuck yeah. These guys don't care. If the weapon is held a little to the right or to the left in the This hand, man is Captain fucking America, man. This guy's awesome. I want to find if this guy's still alive and buy him a beer. Remember when you shot those flaming bullets at wood? That was metal. Remember to take and keep a tight, firm... Watching them all very slowly, tentatively put it in the web of their hand is so painful. Point it at yep, the instructor's at the gut. trigger into the gut. <laughs> that way, if you shoot me, Johnson, I won't have to live through the rest of this video. I'll be dead in five minutes. Your use of handguns probably won't be limited to the pistol. Let's have a look at one of the revolvers used by the army. Oh, fuck yeah, victory model. This guy's probably like, yeah, this is good. It's baller. Everyone thinks you're cool when you use it. Doesn't look the same, not in your hand. But I just hold my hand out like a Ken doll. And there we go. <laughs> Kung Fu action grip, I guess. Kung Fu grip. After a little practice, this adjustment will become instinctive. <laughs> High and low ready. Two degrees difference. The pistol or the revolver can be obtained by using a two-handed grip. Oh, two-handed. Fancy. Show me your two-handed grip. The <gasps> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. The grip can also be reversed for left-handed shooters. In such cases, the gun is held in the left hand. Finger on the trigger at all times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good fucking lord. No. This is great. Oh, yeah, and left-handed, too. <laughs> Grip it around the bottom <laughs> like you'd... <laughs> this is... Look at that face he made. If if you don't grip the magazine like it's gonna fall out, it'll betray you. <laughs> the magazine may leave at any time. Oh, no. These guys, what is this grip called? Later, the tripod? Other opportunities to apply the two-handed grip in the prone and flag all of Why your do you students. Want other opportunities to apply that. It's awful, objectively. After the one. No wonder why every like video of 1911 shooters the in the 40s, they're just doing it one-handed. First prone. Oh shit! Takes the longest to assume, this is how you can snipe. Oh, okay, I see now. Yeah, heels to the ground, comrade found. As prone as best of the three basic firing positions for steady and accurate long-range firing, it should be practiced until it can be assumed quickly and easily. So these guys are going to be like artillerymen, right? They're training on the 1911. They're not front lines. Sir, what about the Garin? Fuck the Garin! All you need is hardball. With the gun extended. The cherries won't know what hit them. God. Can you believe that that was the combat uniform of the era? It's swanky, man. It's swanky. Have you ever wanted to try to kill a German in your Sunday best? Have your cap flat enough to collect all the brass? A neat trick is rolling They're laying so close together, if they did shoot, they'd just be nailing each other in the this face. It's the character building. From guessing your location. Oh, the enemy won't be able to guess your location. Excellent, excellent. Is kneeling. Like prone, kneeling offers a relatively small target, and at the same time is very steady. It's easy to get into. Really? Just drop down on one knee and extend the gun. What about bracing it against a knee? You can fire your elbow, on maybe. Either knee as long as you're well balanced. I'd... Oh yeah, either knee's fine. There's, there's All right, no flag everyone again. That. Just go ahead and point that around like a flashlight. Practice. Learn them and good. Fingers on the trigger, play. boys. You never know when you need to shoot. Now remember, it's important that you let your leg strap dangle because it looks fucking baller. It does. Remember, hand on bottom. 
It's a good idea to alternate knees, for in combat, the terrain and cover will decide which one... Alternate knees to. between shots. Learn every move yep. so it can be done smoothly and promptly without <laughs> having to think about it. Can you imagine what this qualification was going to look like? Alright, two shots left knee, one shot right knee, stand, tripod, Place prone, three shots. Ready to move in any direction. Yeah, athletic stance, keep your knees bent, don't lock them, Place you'll fall target. over. Knees flexed. With the trunk bent slightly this is how you advance the toward the enemy. Gun out like a plastic army Hold man. Arm straight with the wrist Walk like a goose that has the shit. <laughs> then, using the shoulder as a pivot point, raise the gun to eye level. Oh, yes. Tank turrets. The That's the best way to shoot a pistol. It's like a tank. Dead or alive. I want to see somebody do RoboCop with these movements. The Dead or alive, you're <laughs> coming with me. And centered between the knees at about a 45 degree angle from the body. <laughs> Raised pistol. Hollywood ready. Taught in basic training may affect accuracy <laughs> when combat firing. Yeah, you need to jerk it out when you pull the trigger. Oh, Just straight okay. at them. The fourth <laughs> Throw the bullets, they go further. <laughs> if you throw it like that movie <laughs> wanted. But it isn't practical for combat. The main reason is that you can't see whether your gun is on the target in that position. Then two, the Nazis put their arm out like this, and that's why you shoot them with this gun. When they do that, you shoot them. Simple. That's how you find the 19, them. The 1911's recoil is so strong, you have to hit flex to recoil. He's gotta, you gotta chuck them Elvis hips into it. Windmill your arms unpredictably. Some shooters find more The elbow is held flexed or bent instead of being You think this guy just escaped from a psych ward? They no. just recoil. Like, look at this guy. He's just like... Be careful, the tremendous recoil of the 45 means that you have to be very strong in the shoulders. God, could you imagine them doing, uh, you know, like, fucking single-arm dumbbell raises to prepare for this? Yes. Oh, yeah, yep. He's like, hey, That's nice. hey, cameraman. Am I gonna do it? I'm gonna oh, do it this time. Shit, the jump. can't land in the same place twice. If the ground happens to be rough or uneven, you're apt to lose your balance. Oh. Turn smoothly. So then why are you the showing the me? Body, take care of Just turn smoothly. Right. The ground will always be okay with you pivoting on one foot with all of your weight. I think I'm more confused about handgun fundamentals after having watched this. I'm an okay shot, but... I want to try some of this, but I'll get thrown off a gun range. Like, imagine if you pivoted in the booth like that. <laughs> Just starts unloading one-handed, put four rounds into the ceiling. The U.S. Army said this was classified. You, they should have unclassified this and dropped it on the krauts. They had, like, a whole bunch of NDs. <laughs> oh my god, look at these guys on the gun range. It's lifting oh, day. Pew, pew, pew. Wow. Now let's see how these same men no. do with live ammunition. Oh no. Oh. Oh. These are the first rounds they've fired since completing the basic firing course. That's not a firing the course then. Easily seen, tracer ammunition is being oh, used. No. That's not bad. Yeah, uh, one maybe miss. Uh, he clipped that shoulder, maybe. Yeah, but at 50 yards, that's not bad. Is that what he said they were shooting? I think so, but that guy just also walked forward and they're shooting again. Where'd he go? One hit, that's qualifying, is one hit? That's all it takes with a 45. At 25 yards, kneeling, the group will do fairly well. Of course, some of the men will make natural mistakes, but misses are not far off the mark. Minor corrections will put these men right on the target. Oh, yeah, yeah, time. near misses. Really scare them. You're good. It's close enough. It's just like a battleship gun. No. 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 Yes. You're fired, the Johnson. The concussion of the forty-five going by will liquefy his brain. Hey, that's good. 
That guy's got it. With point All right. Firing, yeah. Three, two, one, hike. To the target and work gradually back as Holy crap, that's not bad for pairs. Watch this next man. After firing at the first <laughs> We target, use Tall Johnson. Change his grip on the gun, missing the second Fucking target. Ed Gwynn over here playing in Lurch in the Monsters. Bum, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, bang. Okay, no, that captain's just unreasonably he's short. He's a widow. Okay. He's a widow guy. And he's a little guy. It's his birthday. He's a little birthday boy. He's a widow guy. You don't want to make fun of him on his birthday. That'd make him cry. We took this next man's glasses just to see what would happen. I do appreciate that they've all got the first aid tin on their on their hip. They'll need it. They'll be bandaging the web of their hand. Ugh. He shot that second guy in the fucking liver. For teaching large groups of men combat or practical firing, a regular pistol range can be easily converted. The new U.S. Army 45 Division, as seen in Hearts of Iron, and 1999 DLC. With two bobbing targets placed eight feet apart. I wish Hearts of Iron gave you that much control over your divisions. I do too. Because I would absolutely be like, all right, you guys have earned the right to use truncheons. Hell yeah. It cost me $50 to outfit a division. That guy was shooting like the stonker game. If additional support is needed, rest the hand or arm against the solid object, but never the gun itself. Never touch the gun. It's not a solid object. For practicing point firing, shoot from the 15-yard line. Point Allow firing? No more than two steps point firing, yeah. The safety angle. Point firing will require more... Ah, yeah, look at that control. Or kneeling positions. Notice they don't show the targets. Should be designed to provide additional <laughs> time for the standing position. That's not important now. They're point firing. Test judgment, as well as so by the mix of khakis, wools, and HBTs, I believe that was a mixed group. Look at this guy sneaking. Groups. Sneak 100. Ah! Oh, it's a no! Jerry in the church! Don't use tracers on that building, Johnson. <laughs> it's all wood. It's dried post oak. <laughs> Targets may be rigged and you know this is like an abandoned point. mining town that just happened to be near where they put this base, right? This guy just got loose and they're looking for him. At 25 <laughs> yards, the He's got the reef of madness. Field. He's shooting into the Ahead wooden the open, town. Only point firing will be possible. This single man with a 45 is being trained to take out Karen Tan. Kind of training that can mean the difference <gasps> he got him. his life. And he got him too. He did. And he didn't even start a fire. This was restricted. This was sensitive and classified enough to restrict it. This okay. is one of the best cases for overclassification or against it that I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh 